so how are we doing in the midst of the hellscape the ongoing you know we we, we keep calling this the hellscape and yet every week it's like the world goes oh yeah you want a hellscape yeah. Yeah, I think the last few years, every New Year's Eve, when I'll be like, ninth this year, next year, next year's our Budala. This New Year's Eve, we got to be like, okay, listen, I don't want any trouble. <laughs> Please just, just, just go easy on us, man. 2020 was a lot. We need a break. Yeah, <laughs> just, just give us a break. We're in the midst of the great reopening. How's that going right now? The uh, reopen America. I heard on TV that they're going to require all Florida schools to be open yeah. and all the kids to be in school every day. Florida's got like 10,000 new cases every day right now. So that's going to go really well, I think. Yeah, I, th I, I don't think th they're quite expecting this is not going to turn. This is not going to go the way you think. They keep thinking they can just like will this thing away. Like, if we just put our fingers in our ears and sing the theme from the Flintstones, there won't be any malware. But that's not really how it works. Like, okay, you kids have had your fun. Now let's let's just get back to normal, okay? Yeah. Like that's not really how it works. I, I don't think I, I I don't And like why do we even want to go back to the norm normal? Like what an opportunity this is to rebuild some shit about our society that's terrible. Oh god, no, don't do that. I know. But that like what an opportunity when everything's already kind of dismantled to be like, you know what? Because I saw a whole thread on Twitter today of teachers being like, so if I test positive and have to quarantine, is that my sick leave? Because I'm trying to save up my sick leave for maternity leave. And someone was like, don't you get maternity leave? And they were like, well, yeah, technically, but you have to use all your sick time first. Which means then when your baby gets sick. Maybe we could fix things like that here while everything's kind of torn down. You know? Or, or, or. Or we could fight everybody harder. There you go. That's it. That's what we're going to do. Because America. Speaking of America, I've never lived in a state where anything more than like a bottle rocket was legal. Oh, those aren't legal here. Whatever. They are in Wyoming and everybody drives over the state <laughs> line. Saturday night, it sounded like we were under siege. Like I was waiting for Thanos and those four assholes that roll with Thanos to just come down our street. Yeah, we had I I, I we couldn't do our tech show on uh, on uh, Saturday because the explosions were going off and Loki really wanted to speak to the manager. Uh, yeah, <laughs> poor Simba. Like the girls are just went upstairs. They were like, "Nice, we're gonna we're going upstairs. Tell us when it's over." Simba could just not settle down. We fed him a lot of catnip from said herb garden. Uh, it's it's the, the, our dog. He he. We 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 have him on so many drugs because there's no other way to, to just he, he wants to he wants to yell and fight. Yeah, he is be. so angry and pissed and scared and angry and does not like it. And they've still been shooting them the food a lot. This yeah. it is Tuesday, July the seventh, which is not. Not July it's the fourth. Off here, finally, it has tapered off here. It's not even July the first, which is Canada Day, so they kind of have an excuse, maybe. No, no, it's July the seventh. Do you know what happened on July the seventh? July the fourth was Independence Day, and July the seventh was when they finally managed to wake up Ben Franklin's night. Night. He was so night hung over <laughs> in a bed full of hookers. Yeah. They left that out of Hamilton. July seventh was the day they gave Ben Franklin some coffee. Like, if you actually stay in the theater during intermission at Hamilton, there is a 15-minute musical number that is an orgy with Ben Franklin yeah. and a bunch of hookers. They don't tell you that. It's an Easter egg. Ben Franklin invented meth. True story. Um, let's get the intro going. You're so full of shit. <laughs> Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring you back here for a little segment we like to call what the fuck is wrong with you and of course as is per usual this year um it's it's just after a splody day so of course we have splody day stories because people can't ever not do things properly with fireworks and this 
fucking country. Because America! Um, let's start off with California. Fire safety for Europeans. Did you did you see those uh those shots from from uh, July Fourth the night uh, on on the news of yeah, all the fireworks? Put the Blade Runner soundtrack over. <laughs> all the illegal fucking fireworks going off. Did you see that video from LA? Yeah. Yeah. Well, guess what? I think we've we've solved that mystery. California fire seizes more than 10,000 pounds of illegal fireworks from a home in Eureka. 10,000 pounds. That is what? Five tons? I believe it's five. I'm, I'm sure. correct. That, that's five tons. Um, July 1st. Humboldt County Sheriff's deputies were dispatched to the 700 block of Alpha Street in Eureka to investigate the report of illegal fireworks. While on the scene, deputies located illegal fireworks, located, uh, notified law enforcement. Um, law officers seized over 10,000 pounds of illegal fireworks from the residence. I'm going to say that again. From the residence. And you can tell because this guy obviously blew all the hair off of his entire head. <laughs> Um, the fireworks will be transferred to uh, California State Fire Marshal and safely destroyed. Zachary Edward Brown, age 34, of Eureka, was arrested and booked on the following charges. Possession of more than 5,000 pounds of dangerous fireworks. Uh, so deliver fireworks without a permit. Possession of fireworks without a permit. I don't mean to make fun. He actually has quite a nice shaped head to be bald. And the tan is even, which is extra points. So before you all get mad at me. 10,000 pounds. That's a lot. In your house. 10,000 pounds of fucking explosives in cardboard boxes in your house. That seems unsafe. A little. See, my dad was a fireman. We never got to do shit with fireworks. Like, one year we got sparklers. <sighs> <laughs> my parents didn't fuck around with that stuff so well while we're just quickly on to the next bit uh what i wanted to say i'm going to say a phrase here that it's gonna this is kind of a slow burn it takes you a second to think about it but when you do it's just the awfulness seeps into you and the phrase is homemade fireworks no <laughs> <laughs> Now I want to point out everybody not, in the I'm story. Is, say anything. Everybody in the story is fine, but too injured by homemade fireworks in New Hampshire. Officials say two men were injured with what appeared to be homemade fireworks detonated in Lacona, New Hampshire. What? I need the link. Oh, hold on. Hold on. There you go. Um. Fire Chief Kirk Beatty said the explosion happened on Friday night before the 4th of July. Both victims were taken to the hospital with leg injuries. Um, one of them had to be flowed to another facility for the treatment. Reports the incident being investigated by the fire and police departments. Homemade fireworks. How do you even fucking make fireworks? <laughs> you want me to make some? No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to? He can demonstrate. You're yeah, live on the air. No, thank you. Let's we show. actually had a big controversy in the neighborhood Facebook group because some dude had like a whole mess of fireworks and was shooting them at the other houses, and it was a whole it was a whole bunch of drama. Do you know how to make fireworks? I know how to make bombs. <laughs> That's not the same. Okay. Are well, the bombs pretty? <laughs> Fireworks. Fireworks are supposed to be pretty. Fireworks are just bombs with attitude. Um. Well, he doesn't know the part about the attitude. That's what I'm asking. Like, how do you make fireworks that aren't just bombs? Do you throw in glitter? <laughs> <laughs> chemicals. It's all done with chemicals. But yeah, chemicals, so. different kinds of powder, different stages. Why in God's in a, in a country where you could just go to the fucking every fucking convenience store, Walmart, in New Hampshire, in New Hampshire, 
I think you can actually buy them in New Hampshire. And you're like, no, no, I don't want no store bought. You let's do homemade. Those explode better. Evidently. I mean, the state slogan is live free or die, and it's on their fucking license plate. Yeah, live free or, or, not and. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, let's move on to, um, we had a big conversation today about cancel culture. Came out from Harper's Magazine and all these these, uh, very white people, very rich white intellectuals in in big quotes. All of Um, whom have a platform and who've had somebody go hey that that sucked of you and they think that means they lost their platform yeah um they think that censorship this that's a time people will remember what you say you know you say things the internet is forever um so in that spirit this i maybe want to rethink how you handle some of these instances Home Depot woman becomes violent when asked to put on face mask in Home Depot. Quote, I believe in white power. The Illinois woman has been charged with battery after she became violent and made racist remarks at a Home Depot when a fellow shopper asked her to put on a face mask. I was shocked for a moment looking at it now. It doesn't surprise me to hear it coming out of her mouth. The victim, uh, Sydney Water said. Water said the encounter on Friday left her with scrapes and bruises. She says it began when the woman in the video, identified as Terry Hill, Terry with an I, um, approached a store employee Waters was speaking with. Hill was complaining about other people not wearing masks. But while complaining, Hill took off her mask and Waters asked her to put it back on. She didn't appreciate that and she ripped her mask off, started going for the gold. She was going to spit in my face. She was going to cough on me. Um. Yeah, complain. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. What happened there? Quote: The entitlement is disgusting. Waters can be heard saying in the video. Quote: Yes, I am entitled. I'm white and I'm a woman. Hill replies. Quote: I believe in white power. Now that's one See, of those. Th- if we lived in a place that was sane, mm. you would read this article and be like, how did we get from masks to white power? I don't. Yeah. But we live in fucking America. What's left of it. Yeah. Where putting a five by seven piece of cloth on your face is tyranny. <clears throat> and all the white people got the vapors about it. And that has something to do with Black Lives Matter, apparently. And fuck your YouTube comments, by the way. (sighs) (laughs) And it's all just one big, awful flurry of dumbass. You're on camera. I would think even a racist would kind of understand most other people are not fans. Apparently not. Because this shit happens once a day now. You're on, of all the, it's like being on cam. you, you don't do that on camera. Cause they it's, know that. it's not going to go the way you think. It's not going to be like, they only hang out with other garbage people and they only watch Tucker fucking Cars- Carlson. So they think everybody is garbage people. They, they really think that and then when they encounter actual human beings, they don't understand. They actually think you say, I believe in white power on video and people are going to be like, she says what we're all thinking. It's, 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 it's what it's, it's, we need this. Yes. She's the hero. No, that's not. I'm honestly still stuck on. Why isn't anyone else in here wearing a mask? I'm going to take mine off to say that. And when you ask me to put it back on, I'm going to lose my shit and spit on you. Well, it's I, I said this on on Twitter a while. A but that took a ago. hard left turn. Left turn. We we have a problem in America in that people have have merged the idea of freedom yeah. with "you're not the boss of me." Yeah, and that's not where the same. not the same. No, but people seem to think so because we're stupid. Um. 
Let's move on. Oh, God damn, this guy. Get ready to get angry, Tara. This one is Jesus Christ. Angry. Oh, no, this Jesus Christ. Um, This comes from Japan. And, you know, I know we're, we're in the midst of a pandemic. I know it's hard to meet people. This, on the other hand, is not how that works. Um, Aichi man arrested after having slashed over 1,000 women's tires to get to know them better. Oh, that's some serial killer shit. Fuck no. <laughs> June 11th, the 43-year-old woman exited a supermarket uh, and drove away her car. However, she didn't get far for, before noticing her driver's side rear tire had gone completely flat. While examining the flat, another car came up. The driver, 32-year-old Yoshido Harada, offered to replace her damaged tire. While a kind gesture from a total stranger, the woman was struck with a sudden case of deja vu. That's because the same thing had happened to her in June of the previous year. Unsettled by the coincidence, she decided to report the encounter to the police, who investigated the matter and found through surveillance footage that Harada had slashed her tire in the parking lot of the supermarket. He then followed her car until it pulled over so he could be first on the scene to offer help. According to police, Harada admitted to the crime, saying he did it in order to meet the woman. Now here's where the plot thickens. As the news of the strange attempt at courtship came, some netizens were reminded of an eerily similar case in 2013. The suspect was also named Yoshido Harada, who was 25 at the time. Assuming this isn't a remarkable coincidence, the man was picked up seven years earlier, had the exact same misdeed. In fact, during that arrest, Harada's lawyer remarked he had probably done it about 1,000 times. That's some serial killer shit. That's Ted Bundy. <sighs> That's like the reverse Ted Bundy. And by and this shit like this is why when men are like, oh, women are so worried about it. This is the shit we're worried about. Because literally, what, there was some blog that called it Schrodinger's Rapist. Literally any man could be the man that wants to fucking murder us and wear our skin. <laughs> it's not funny, but the way you phrase it is fucking funny. Literally any man. Because y'all are fucking crazy and you do shit like this. Yeah, because it's, this is, uh, this is, all right, I'm going to blame this on romantic comedies again. Yeah. I am. Because th this is, it's it's taught people a bad lesson in that, because this, this sounds like a romantic comedy scheme. But crazy shit equals romance. No. <clears throat> crazy shit equals crazy shit. Crazy shit, yeah. And that equals fucking stalking. How many after a thousand? Literally, Ted Bundy used to pretend he had a broken arm so some poor girl would help him put something in his van and then she would end up in the van and be dead. After this is just reversing that. Oh, let me help you with the thing. This is why we don't accept help from strangers. I have AAA. Someone offers to help me with my tire. I'm like, no, thank you. I'm going to wait till the guy who's being tracked on GPS comes because if he kills me, someone's going to know. <laughs> That's comfort. I gotta worry about if the AAA guy is gonna kill me. After, after, you know, after maybe like after the first 50 tires and you're not getting a date, maybe you might want to rethink your strategy, but Jesus Christ. This is fucking. Uh. I don't want to hear you're not all men shit, okay? Well, you might not want to, but you're probably gonna. So, you're gonna. yeah, because it's it might not be all of you, but we don't know which ones. It's not like you have to wear a scarlet R on you for a rapist. Like, that would be nice. You don't have a little Sims gem above your head that tells us that you're a fucking serial killer. We don't know. Uh, we don't know that you are just being charming. We're just slashing tires. All right, this this next one is it's a stupid and the headline is going to throw you cuz you're going to be like, "What?" But I we'll, my heart down a bit. Yeah. We'll we'll get into why this went this way, but um what the f <sighs> This comes to us from Chicago. Chicago man sentenced to 15 years after firing into murder victim's grave. 
You got it. <laughs> Evergreen Park, Illinois. A man who fired a gun into a murder victim's grave during a burial service has been sentenced to 15 years in federal prison. Now, you might be thinking, 15 years? Put that aside a second. We'll circle back around to it, okay? Uh, Elton Stevenson drew a handgun at Evergreen Cemetery and fired a single shot into the grave of a man who had been murdered two days earlier. Quote, you ain't shit. You got what you deserved, he said before firing the shot. Stevenson then waved the gun in the direction of mourners and fled. He was arrested a short time later near the entrance of the cemetery. Now, let's first, let's first off, let's start out. What in God's name do you think you're doing? I don't know, but the supernatural reboot is fucking bad. <laughs> why? Why the fuck are you? You can't Did kill him. Did you get back up? <laughs> is there some kind of zombie outbreak in Chicago <laughs> that I don't fucking know about? He, he can't. It's, it, it's motherfucker. Did he only drink the poison that makes you fall asleep? And you're the only one that knows that? <laughs> Will, is, Will is like, this guy's so fucking haunted. Yeah. All right, no, you guys said you they're going... You a hole in the coffin. That spirit can get out now. <laughs> <laughs> they nailed this thing <laughs> shut for a reason. Now, while some of you might be saying, all right, that's fucked up, but 15 years? Well, um, he uh, was a con pled guilty to one count of illegal possession of a firearm by a previously convicted felon. That's, That's a new felon. you see, if he had just not shot a dead man in front of his mourning family and friends. Maybe not, not doing that was free. <laughs> you just maybe don't pull the gun out in front of witnesses. Maybe. Maybe not just not do that. Is that was like, that? I'm enough? sure it's going to look sweet in your underground like rock video. Yes. But you're an idiot and you're going to jail. Yeah. <laughs> man, who wants to be the dude who gets in jail? What are you here for? I shot a dude. Oh, man, did he die? No, he was already dead. <laughs> <laughs> who needs the last I wanted to make sure I wouldn't miss. Like, I've dealt with some dudes on Twitter that need the last word real bad. <laughs> <laughs> Like, who needs the last word this bad? <laughs> you know what? You know uh, what the last word is? You got to be alive. Yeah, you, you won. Last word, man. You win. You got to be alive. You got to keep on living. You get to, you will go on for however long. You get to say more words than he did because he's fucking dead. The other guy was sitting there with a the bullet and a knife, like, hashtag, slash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's go on. This one is just, speaking of somebody who's going to be all of the haunted, um, New York here. When we think art smugglers and, and relics and antique smugglers, we, we seem to, th we think of people who are like, you know, suave and sophisticated you yeah, know thomas crown right um they aren't um, <laughs> man accused of smuggling ancient egyptian artifacts through jfk in dirty suitcase a brooklyn man was indicted for allegedly trying to smuggle hundreds of yeah, egyptian a lot. of a yeah you see that? how many things there of Egyptian artifacts stuffed inside dirty suitcases through JFK, including some nearly 4,000-year-old relics. Ashraf Omar uh, Eldir, Elderier. Elderier, thank you very much, 47, was caught at the Queens Airport in January, allegedly carrying three suitcases filled with 590 antiques, 
covered in foam and bubble wrap. All right, first we're going to start off. Uh, anyone, any, if we actually have any archaeologists who work at the show, uh, who work at the show, who watch the show, um, and hear that this guy is carrying ancient artifacts, 4,000 year old artifacts in foam and bubble wrap. They're just cringing right now. <laughs> Um, when U.S. Customs and Border Protection agents opened the packages, sand and dirt <sighs> spilled out, and some of the items smelled of wet earth, indicating they had been recently dug up. No, they let the sand out. Didn't you fucker see the mummy? <laughs> <laughs> so the July wedge of the 2020 quarter quail is going to be at the mummy. Then. I... This this at least one thing in that suitcase was fucking cursed. It's 2020. This dude, so they were wet. This dude dug them right out of the ground. Fucking grave robin bullshit. Plop them in a fucking Samsonite and tried to fly through JFK with them. Didn't even bother to wash the shit off. No one's gonna. I mean, there's, no one's gonna pay attention to that. It's JFK. They pay attention to everything. Like, just so you know, if you travel through JFK with your 13-inch dildo, they're handling it. Clean it before you use it. I mean, and with the dirty suitcase, the first thing it would have been like, you know, if it's JFK, they'd be like, "Did we dirty that one up? <laughs> Was that up? Oh no, That's I came that one. That's kind of more LaGuardia action. JFK is the, the, the nice airport. Nice. Among the relics were objects made to be buried in the funerary pyramids of Egyptian royalty, such as gold amulets and wooden tomb models, including one that dated back to around 1900 BCE. Um, there were also two funerary stele... I, I can't... S-T-E-L-A-E. -E. I'm not sure what that word is. Uh, they're stele? Not st or stone monuments to the deceased hailing from the Roman period. Bitch, you took fucking Roman ghosts. You were going to be haunted by fucking Great Caesar. Literally, mm -hmm. Great Caesar's ghost. Didn't they just say there's supposed to be a sandstorm across the whole United States? Yeah. The fucking mummy's out. <laughs> you let the mummy out. <laughs> you asshole. Did we need this? No, we did not. We didn't need a mummy. We're kind of full. What happened in the murder hornets? Did, did we just, did that? <laughs> I think they just gave up. I, th I think I heard earlier that July is angry volcanic sea otters, so. <laughs> the murder Mark hornets, is August. the murder hornets were like, man, we can't compete with this shit. We'll wait until 2021. We're gonna go hibernate, this is bullshit. <sighs> Where is Brendan Fraser? We need him. He's on Doom Patrol. He's, he's the only one that can save us. He's busy. He's doing DC. He's he's on Doom Patrol. He's busy. I don't. Well, we need him. <laughs> he's a Magi. <laughs> we need him. Where is so dead fair? Get him on the phone. We have one. This last one tonight, where motherfucker is lucky to be up. This is okay. There are two places on the world that constantly keep showing up on our show. One of which is Florida, of course, um, because that is where stupid comes from. It's it's where it's made. Um, where bottle. orchards are. Yeah, that's where yeah. stupid comes from. Um, the other is Australia, because that is the land of death. That That is, this, this motherfucker, holy shit. Not a lot of people know this. This is a rare little catechism nugget for you. Australia was what God created on the last day. And all the angels were giving him shit about meeting the deadline. So he just made a whole continent of fuck you. Because he was done. Because Michael was like, come on, man, we're up against the deadline. You got to get this done. Fine. Has every kind of snake. Queensland driver going 100 km kilometers per hour uses knife to battle brown snake trying to bite him between the legs. One of the world's deadliest snakes is given a Queensland motorist the fright of his life. 
Jimmy, 27, from Gladstone, was driving down the Dawson Highway you know, west of... Jimmy. If this wasn't ABC, like, I'll show you, if it was, this wasn't actually ABC, I would be like, what? But, I just um, love the new last name. Just, you know, Jimmy from Gladstone. Um, was driving down the Dawson Highway west of Calliope in central Queensland when he saw a brown snake in the cab of his of his truck. Um driving 100 kilometers an hour and it just started to I just started to break and the more I moved my legs it started to wrap around me its head started to strike at the seat between my legs so here you are doing your deliveries point A to point B and you look down and there's one of the deadliest snakes in the world and he's coming for your crotch <laughs> He feared he'd been bitten and he was about to die, so he killed the snake and put it in the rear tray and drove off at great speed to the nearest hospital. <laughs> Jimmy's fucking hardcore. Um, Because Jimmy didn't scream and wrap his truck around a tree. <laughs> officer spotted the truck going 123 kilometers an hour and pulled him over. I'm amazed he stopped. Hand is tricking Jimmy explained what had happened, telling the traffic officer to feel my heart. Drum was captured on the officer's body camera. Ambulance were called and determined Jimmy had, Jimmy had not actually been bitten, but was suffering from shock. How, fu blame him. how fucked up is that? He wasn't even bitten, but it, that was so stressful that he went into shock from just the experience. His body just said, fuck this. He almost got neutered by a venomous snake <laughs> at 100 kilometers an hour. There's, 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 yeah, they have an unusually fast acting venom and can kill within 15 minutes. He said the best thing to do was remain calm and call for help rather than run around. Well, he didn't say the, the doctor doesn't. Yeah, university snake expert Brian Fry. He didn't say shit about driving fast. Yeah. I mean, I guess the idea is the faster your heart pumps it through your blood, the faster you die. Fucker, wait, I just, I would have lost, yeah, I kind of would have gone into shock too. Fuck me. Dude. I wouldn't have had to worry about the snake bite because I would have wrapped my truck around a tree and died. It would have been a very strange crime scene that they were investigating. <laughs> with the snake and the, yeah, the, the, the right. truck, yeah. With the snake still probably latched onto me because it would also die in the crash. Yeah. Jesus. I, I cannot even. Th that's just a. Th that, Maybe that's, everybody does know Jimmy because he sounds hardcore. That's just a week a weekday in Australia. That's just another day at the office. Yep. <laughs> the new Wolverine movie sounds awesome. <laughs> Uh, I'm telling you, that's that's God's little fuck you island. Just I, God damn that poor bastard. I guess yeah. The first thing we learned this week is in Australia, things can happen that don't happen anywhere else in the world. That like, will I mean, just you know fucking kill you. Yep. Oh, are you having a, you're gonna lick your butt for everybody on the internet? That's nice. Probably. Okay, good. Um, we've learned this week that uh, next time you smuggle ancient artifacts, uh, maybe don't just chuck them through JFK. Maybe just leave the ancient artifacts alone until 2021. Okay. Just <laughs> give us. Alone. We we yeah. need some breathing room, is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Archaeologists, um, just take the rest of the year off for all of us. We learn. <laughs> Maybe don't shoot the dead man if you're already if you could because you're going to you're going to jail for 15 years for shooting a guy who's already dead. How Unless you can prove he was a zombie. How stupid are you? That's pretty fucking stupid. It's like how you get fired on your day off. How you go to jail for shooting a dead guy? Um. We've learned that uh, ways to meet women do not include slashing their tires. The way to meet women is not by acting like a serial killer. Surprisingly, 
They we don't, already don't fucking trust you. Yeah, so surprisingly, women don't 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 grok on the serial killer, killer vibe. It's, it's, we already don't fucking trust you. Hmm. You don't need to be reinforcing that as a first impression. Um, we've learned that the internet is forever. So if you're going to scream your uh, your racism, it's going to be shared. It's going to follow you. That's you from now on. Yep. Forever. For, yeah. The Terry Hill. Whenever anyone ge- Google's Terry Hill with an I, I believe in white power is what's going to pop up. You, you, you pick that hill to die on. Yep. Terry Hill. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> finally, we've learned a lot of things you can do from home. Um, making your own fireworks, not one of them. Don't listen to this man. <laughs> I mean, I was about to say actually. The devil is a liar. Don't listen to this man. I, I, they're everywhere. They're quite literally fucking everywhere. And they're not hard to get, especially in fucking New Hampshire. Jesus. What? That's not a good, that's not a good DIY quarantine project. (laughs) There's a lot of fun DIY. You can just make sourdough like everybody. 